Greetings and welcome to Skyships and our Airbus Marathon. We have already heard the history of the first Airbus plane, A300, and now we can smoothly pass to its successor, A310. At first sight, the new aircraft is almost indistinguishable from its predecessor. Yes, the new A310 is very close to A300 in many ways. So why did they develop two almost identical planes? Let's take a look. During the development of the A300, a large number of risky decisions was made. The risk was necessary, because at that time the aviation market was dominated by American and Soviet aircraft manufacturers. And to challenge them, it was necessary to have the iron bar serious advantages of the new European aircrafts. The main innovation of the A300 was the engines. Just two engines against three or four on other big jets. The logic was simple. Fewer engines, less fuel consumption, cheaper flights. Cheaper flights, more money for the airline. More money, more sports cars in your garage. The plan was awesome. But the world is not ideal. The development of an airplane is always a compromise. You want to fly far? Take more fuel. But that will make you heavier. You want more passenger capacity? OK. Make it bigger and, yes, even more heavier. A heavier aircraft will require more engine thrust, but it is limited. They did not have today's Trends and GENX jet monsters. The A300 was very economically efficient and carried a lot of passengers. And the payment for those advantages was the range. The plane flew for 7500 kilometers. Not impressive for a wide-body airliner. Three-engine Americans could fly 9 to 10,000. Come on, Airbus, you can do better. Yes, Europeans did their best. A300 had many modifications. Among them was the version A300B10, which had an increased range. But there was one but. Version B10 had a shortened fuselage and, due to that, smaller mass and longer range. But everything else was taken from the old ones. For example, the wing from the ordinary A300 was too big. The plane didn't need that much lifting force but it still had to carry all that weight. And more weight requires more thrust and fuel. Which brings us back to the money. Another issue came from the UK. Remember I told you how they left the Airbus? Instead, they had created their own British airspace, gathered the entire aviation industry into one corporation and haven't done anything else. The country was hit by an economic crisis and London didn't have enough money for the development of new planes. And then the great British Airways announced the plan to upgrade the airline park and buy a large number of new jets from the US. The brand new Boeing 767. Yes, the Americans didn't want to give up the competition. And the games of politicians had started once again. The result of those games was the return of the United Kingdom to Airbus in 1978. At the same time, Airbus announced the new A310 project. Its task was raising the A300 concept to perfection. This plane had to get a shortened fuselage and a new, more efficient wing. To other innovations, we can add stylish carbon brakes and winglets. Most of the issues have been solved quite quickly. Engineers have gained a lot of experience in the A300 modifications development. The new model was ordered by Lufthansa and Swiss Air. After some time, the Air France and Iberia joined them. Two basic modifications were planned. The A310-100 for original short-range routes and the A310-200 for transcontinental flights. The engines remained American. General Electric CF6 and Pratt Whitney JT9D. We're already familiar with those. Another attempt of Rolls-Royce to get into the project was once again unsuccessful. Well, it just wasn't working out for those guys. A310 had many systems similar to A300-600R, the most far-flying version of A300. The unification of the Airbus model line began from those two jets. Someone can say that unification makes planes similar and boring. But for the airlines it is real joy. You can easily switch crews from one model to another with minimum training. The new A310 model made its maiden flight in 1982. By then, the Airbus received orders for 181 planes from 15 airlines. 
which was quite awesome for that time. However, the 100 model didn't become popular and Airbus abandoned its development. Instead of 100 model, with reduced range, model 300 appeared, with a range even greater than originally planned. Of course, the A310 had cargo modifications. And one more thing. The new version MRT, multi-role transport, and MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport, personal transports and aerial refuel tankers. The invasion of foreign countries now even more comfortable. The A310 was a great aircraft, but its age was short. The advantages of a two-engine airliner were played out, and in 1981 its direct competitor, the new Boeing 767, was born. But the idea didn't go anywhere. Sometime later, the Europeans had created their best airliner of that type, the A330. And this one does not plan on leaving. A total of 225 A310 liners were delivered, and dozens of them are still flying. That's the story of the grandfather of all the modern Airbuses. Like this video, subscribe and comment what you think about this plane. And expect a story about the main European airliner. Fast flights and soft landings to you.